The title of today's lecture is How to Reduce the Need for Insulin for Type 2 Diabetes. How to Reduce the Need for Insulin in Type 2 Diabetes. Diabetes is uh, epidemic proportions, both the United States, Mexico, Latin America, India, all over the world. Uh, it's, you know, in the United States alone, there's over 16 million people who are diabetic. That's not counting all the people who are pre-diabetic or have metabolic syndrome. Now, diabetes is extremely dangerous, not because it directly kills you, but it leads to other illnesses that can be fatal. It's a gateway disease. People who have diabetes are more prone to die of strokes, heart attacks, even cancer. There's blindness. Uh, and uh, amputations. It's a very debilitating disease. Now, the symptoms of people tend to get tired, there's a change in weight, loss of weight, gain of weight, blurred vision, drowsiness, tingling or numbness in the hands or feet, slow wound healing, excessive hunger, excessive thirst, and frequent urination. Many people have dry mouth as well. Now, the physiology is this way. The beta cells of the pancreas secretes insulin that then binds with the glucose in the bloodstream, comes to the insulin receptors that will go into muscles and other organs, and then the sugar at that receptor, the glucose at the receptor, is then taken by enzymes from the receptor site to feed the cells. There's a burning in the mitochondria. That's the furnace of the, of the body for producing energy. ATP is produced, and energy is then produced at these furnaces that, of the uh, mitochondria. Now, we're going to focus on how to reduce insulin. So there are many aspects to treating the disease. We're only going to focus on how to reduce the insulin because insulin in and of, in and of itself is problematic. It actually counteracts the possibilities of losing weight, for one thing. And also, when a person can reduce their insulin intake, it cuts down their expense. So this is a way to save money and save your health. We're going to be talking about natural ways. Now, the focus of today has to do with those insulin receptors. Now, the insulin is like a lock. It goes onto the receptor and so it turns it, and then the Glucose can then be carried away by enzymes on the other side. But when there's insulin resistance, it, the insulin doesn't work at the receptor. It, it takes, takes more insulin to make that receptor work so that the glucose can then be taken to the cells for energy. So there are two ways to increase the effectiveness of the insulin, two ways to reduce your need for insulin by taking X extra insulin, insulin shots, or, or drugs that will increase your insulin production. And by the way, in type 2 diabetes, it's not a matter of not enough insulin. It's a matter of insulin resistance. It's type 1 diabetes where there's not enough insulin. The, the beta cells are damaged. But insulin itself is not the issue. It's the, it's the receptor resistance. So there's two ways to increase the body's ability for the insulin to bring the glucose in. One is to make the receptors more sensitive make it more sensitive so as soon as the insulin goes there, as it does in a healthy person, unlocks it, and boom, the glucose is in, reducing insulin resistance. And we're going to talk about ways to do that. The second way is to increase the number of receptors. Increase the number of insulin receptors. So although there has a resistance to it, by having more of them, you're going to get more glucose into the cells. So there's two ways of reducing your need for diabetes decreasing insulin resistance, and increasing the number of receptors. Those are the two ways. And everything we're going to talk about has to do with those two ways. Now, on the positive side, we need to talk about also there's an empowerment through all disease. It doesn't matter what's cancer, diabetes, whatever. So we have ways of people that are empowered through their diabetes. And we're going to hear some stories about that. We, we have Cheryl... Ildi here today, we're going to talk about their actual situation, ways that empower them, and what they do to help control their diabetes in a natural way. 
Now, in the metabolic syndrome, which typically precedes getting diabetes, you, you, there's high cholesterol, tri, high triglycerides, low HDL, uh, there's visceral fat. And as you have visceral fat, if the waist of a woman gets to 35 inches, that's a dangerous level. 